Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be doing a watercolor greeting card. And I have been getting so many comments and views on, actually there's two specific watercolor greeting card videos that I did several years ago that people just keep going nuts over and they're beginner cards. So uh, I think that that's people that are just getting into watercolor are really looking for something that's simple, quick and easy that they can actually do and have it turn out nice for them. So today I'm going to do probably just a simple beach sunset type of greeting card. My husband loves to go down to the beach to watch the sunsets on a regular basis, whether I go with him or not. He'll just take our side-by-side -side, um, uh, cart. I forget what they call those. They're like a quad, but they're for two people, you know. We call it our side-by-side. -side. Anyway, he takes that down. It's Polaris. Takes that down to the beach, and he'll just sit there with a beer or something and watch the sunset, and then he comes back. So I thought maybe a sunset greeting card would be a good birthday card for him. I can't get out and buy a card, so there's no stores open for me to buy a card at. So I'm going to go ahead today, and I'm using my trusty B watercolor paper. You can buy these in packs of 100 sheets. This one is the 6x9, I think. Um, there are now multiple different types of packs that you can buy, which is really nice. I think you can even get up to 9 by 12 or 8 by 12 or something that I saw on Amazon. This is from the Bee Paper Company, B-E-E, -E, like the bumblebee. And they make, yeah, 6 by 9. And they make 100% uh, cotton watercolor paper paper, I can't speak today. They make 100% cotton watercolor paper at an affordable price. The tooth of the paper, meaning the little bumpies or undulations in the paper, are not too great. So if you'd like to do pen sketching and that sort of thing, you can still do that on this paper without any difficulty, especially even with the fountain pen. So what I'm going to do is take my bone folder here, which is not bone, it's plastic, and I'm just going to fold my paper in half and then we'll go ahead and get started with the card. So let me take my bone folder and I'm gonna have the the um, tooth of the paper facing outward. Sometimes people like to go a little past center so that it's easy to open the card, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it as half. And I push back so that it is folded in half all the way across. And that's how I do it. Rather than starting at the back and then having a crease that isn't correct. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and tape this down so that I have all of the edges framed and the inside of the paper will stay protected as well. So I'll take my artist tape. You can buy this online. You can get it at Hobby Lobby, uh, places like that. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead. I'm doing this on an angle because I'm a lefty and I like it angled this way going to leave just a little frame of the paper trying to keep it as even as possible that's a little bit high on this side I think take a a um, pencil and just draw a line across the paper where, where my horizon is going to be now when you're making a composition, building a composition, you never want to split your paper in half. It's just not, it's kind of unsettling to the eye. So you either want to have it down low or up high. I'm going to do mine just a little above half here because I do want to have a little bit of beach here. I'm going to try to get it as straight as possible and just put my line across so that I can tell where my horizon should end and my water will begin. So I'm gonna go ahead by starting with my brush. Just take any brush that you want and go ahead and wet your paper. Did I go over my edge? I may have. Don't wanna do that. There, and I'm just, while I'm doing that, I'm just gonna get my 
watercolor together. Let that kind of sink into the paper a little bit so that it is it has a sheen to it. It's shiny, but it's not puddling with water. So I'll take some ultramarine blue out of my palette here. Don't need a lot of paint. Just a little bit. I need to grab a couple paper toweling here. And I'm just going to fold this in half to dip my brush on before I put it in the water. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab my um, Quinacridone Rose. And I'm getting that ready for my palette here. Just getting a little bit of the rose color and putting that down on my paper. I'm taking some permanent yellow light. You can use whatever yellow you have. Warm or cool is fine. I'm just keeping it on the cooler side. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now, as you can see by my paper here, it's got just a little bit of sheen to it. You can, I hope you can see that on the paper. That's what you want to keep. And I'll take my blue first, wiping my the excess water off of my brush, grabbing my blue, and I'm just going to go kind of on an angle, sweeping upward. I want to get some blue across the top. And then I'm going to just kind of sweep it down. Don't keep it even. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab my Rinse my brush, grab my quinacridone rose or whatever pinkish color you want to use or a cool red. And I'm going to go in there with this again. And then at the bottom, I will take my yellow. Gonna go right across the bottom here on that horizon line. going to go back into my quinacridone rose and I'm going to add a little bit more color to that in here so that I can get a little more oranginess to my color. I'm dabbing my brush off so that I don't take the orange back in because I want fresh color with each piece or each pass. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Each pass. There, and I'm just going to let that dry. Actually, I want a little more over here of the pink. There we go. I'm just going to go ahead and let that dry. Now it's kind of doing its magic. You can see how it's kind of working its way up. You can take any excess paint off the side with your brush. Just keep a thirsty brush. You want to dry it off and then go ahead and dab up the extra color. Now you don't want any puddling on your paper or you'll end up with what we call a bloom or a cauliflower and you don't want to have that on your card. So I'm just going to go along this edge and take that excess color up with my brush, any excess color that might be sitting there. And hopefully my tape is down tight because I'm afraid it lifted on this side and I'm going to have a problem but I don't know now we've got to wait for this to dry you can help it along but you want to wait until the color is where you want it before you go ahead and dry it <clears throat> because as it's drying it's gonna stop spreading I like to just let it do its own thing so I'm gonna let it dry and then we'll meet back now as it's drying you can see I'm losing a little more of the white and I don't want that to happen so I'm gonna kinda crumple up my paper a little bit now Paper toweling has a tendency to have a lot of design in it, and you don't want that on your paper. So dab lightly and carefully so that you're not getting design in if that's what you want to do is 
kind of dab up some of this color. I'm going to go over here too and take a little bit of this over here that I had. See if I can pull some of it back. And then I think I may go ahead and dry my paper. That orange is still working its way in here and I want it to stop up here. There we go. So I'm going to grab my dryer. I'm using a heat gun. You want to make sure you keep it at a distance so that you don't warp your paper or burn your paper but in order to stop this movement onto the white of the paper I'm just going ahead and drying it a little bit keep your dryer moving whether you're using a hair dryer which is safer or a heat gun which is what I have because I used to use it for rubber stamping you can see how my watercolor is lightening up as it dries. That is a characteristic of watercolor. Whereas another medium, gouache, has the opposite effect usually. Um, in most circumstances, this has a tendency to lighten all the time. So, there. I think I'm just about dry. I could see my paper kind of flattening out. So I don't want to overdo it. There. Now that is set. There's my my sunset and now I'm going to go ahead I don't know if I can get rid of the line on my paper I should have lightened it before I started but I'm going to try to see if I can get rid of some of it so that it doesn't show there we go now my sun has already set if you want to have your sun showing just take your paper towel and while your paint is still wet just dab a little circle right in the center for your sun. You might even want to spread it out a little bit so that it looks more natural because the sun isn't perfectly round. It just appears that way to our eyes. So you don't have to worry about your lines as much. Now, I'm going to go in with a little bit of, let's see. I think I'll use, you could use phthalo blue. I'm going to go ahead in with some Mayan Blue Genuine, and uh, let's see here. I want to use a little bit of turquoise, ultramarine turquoise. I'm going to use both colors. Now, Lake Huron here by us is called the Blue Water Coast because of our turquoise waters. Now, I'm not going to bring the water all the way down to the front because I want to have a little bit of sand here. So I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to wet the whole thing below, not the top half, just below the line. Again, being careful not to go over that edge. We want to keep our horizon clean. And I'm going to bring this almost down to the bottom, but not quite. And then I'm going to go ahead, grab a little of my ultramarine turquoise. I think I'm going to mix it in with the ultramarine blue left on my palette, which isn't much, but I'll just mix them together here. And then I'm also going to grab my Mayan Blue Genuine, which tend has a tendency to uh, sparkle a bit. I believe this one sparkles. Let me see. I can't remember. I need to wet it, though, because it dried pretty hard here. Get a lot of water in here. There we go so that I can reconstitute it without ruining my brush. I may just take it directly out of the palette. That might be easier for me. Get a spray bottle here and let it soften. Okay, now I'm gonna go in. I didn't even clean my brush. I just grabbed some of that ultramarine turquoise. Use, if you don't have that, use some ultramarine blue or phthalo blue, but dilute your phthalo blue way down. Otherwise, you're not going to be super happy with it. Now, I'm leaving the turquoise color down toward the shoreline. Because as your water lightens, you see more of that turquoise color if you're familiar with the way the ocean or the Great Lakes look. Then I'm going to go back with the Mayan blue, which is a deeper blue. 
and do my distance. That deeper water is going to be darker. And I'm going to try to leave a little bit of white here and there for my waves. And mixing a little bit of the Mayan blue into here. Then I need to let it dry before I do any more on this area. But while it's drying, whoops, I got to get this white here. It's bugging me. There we go. That's fine. While that's drying, I'm going to grab a sand color. Now you can use yellow ochre and water it down a bit. I'm going to use some buff titanium and yellow ochre. My buff titanium I want to keep way up here, but I'm not sure if I have enough shoreline showing for this to work. And then I'm going to just put this in at the bottom here. Yeah, I don't think there's enough there. I'm going to wet this area. And then I'm going to grab some yellow ochre, allowing it to get into this turquoise on the edge here. Just like that, so that the sand shows. And I'm bringing it in. darkening the color up at the water line. We can let it go, let it dry, and then we'll come back and we will add more detail to this. Okay, oh, I gotta turn this down. I'm listening to my traditional Sunday Urban Sketchers uh, live show on Instagram. It's on every every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time. <clears throat> so I know he's in, I believe he's in Korea or Japan, I can't remember. And it's late at night for him when he does this, but it's an awesome show. So I watch it every Sunday and I wanna finish this up though. So now everything has dried and I'm gonna go in with a little more of my Mayan blue to darken some of this area up where the water is lifting. I just want to darken it a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit along here. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of water so it's not harsh. I want to do what we call softening the edges, just spreading it out so that it doesn't look so harsh. Sometimes you want that look, but waves are never like that. So um, they always have soft edges. So I'm just taking that Mayan blue or my darker blue. You could use ultramarine or whatever. Yeah, well... And I'm just softening it out. There we go. That's pretty good. That's all I wanted to do. Now up here I'm going to take a little bit more of my ultramarine turquoise. And I'm going to just kind of darken that in certain deeper areas of the water. And then again, dipping into my water, I'm just softening those edges out a little bit. But nowadays, we only know four. Three at the Museum of Luke and uh, a different one in other museums. In then I also want to get kind of a line here. Um, actually, I might take some white gouache. I think I will. To put the foam on my water here. And so that, that, that's one part. But I'm going to soften this out. When we, when you there. And now, <clears throat> with my yellow ochre. I want to go back with some yellow ochre back into this wet area back here. And you did a lot of watercolors and sketches quick, quick. 
There we go. So that it mixes into the water. And then I want to have some harsher lines up here where the water line is, where the water has just started pulling back from the shore. Doing that shows the darkness from the water that way. And I'm just going to soften it a little bit. Exactly. Just like that. Need a little more here. This got a little too wet. I think I'm just going to dab it a little bit, and then I'm going to add a little more yellow ochre in. There. Okay, then we'll go ahead and let that dry. Okay, now that that's dry, with the magic of video, I'm just going to go ahead and take a little bit of my M. Graham Artist Gouache and I'm going to dab just a little bit on my palette. You really don't need a lot. In fact, you could just dab your brush in it for that matter, I think. You want to keep it as a nice, strong, um, strong uh, consistency, but you need to wet your brush. I'm just grabbing a number three Princeton Aqua Elite Rigger and I'm going to go into my white so that I have white on the tip here, just loading it up. And I'm going to take this along the edge, breaking it up here and there so that this looks like foam. I'm trying to keep it natural. You might want to look at a picture with some waves so that you can see exactly what it looks like if you're not remembering it well. And you can dry brush it, which just means your brush is drier and it makes these jagged edges like this. Whoops. Sorry about that. Let me just zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. And you can see the jagged edges there. And then the wet areas up here, I also want to have a little bit of white going in and out. That's why you will find. Uh, the Jewish uh, like that because he, he drew a lot of Jewish and it can be different thicknesses inside the, the community so it was really important for him the death month um, and then I want to the also death. have um, these waves coming yes, in breaking when, when they arrived to meet the king it was really uh, important because it was a good meeting so the diplomatic trip was successful and the French gave him uh, gold, and the king, the king gave in return animals like lions and horses. Oh, so on. <laughs> yeah. And then Delacroix had okay. the horses uh, really close because. Uh, and that's all there is to it, you guys. Animals. It's very simple, and you've it's got really yourself cool. a. Beautiful coastal scene. Now, I did not add a lot of color here to this area. I could add a little bit. Why don't I add just a bit? But see, the water is moving. We've got a lot of movement on the water, although it does look calm in the distance. So we might want to add a little color in the distance. Um, I will go ahead and grab a little bit of my pink and a little bit of my yellow. And I'm just going to kind of, whoops, that's too dark, just kind of put it in here and there, just like that. And I'm just going to wash it away a little. I don't want it too dark. I might grab a little more of my color here, my Mayan blue, just because I got it a little darker than I wanted to. Authorization to to port in, in Spain, so they went directly to Morocco. So this is not the first landscape drawings he did um, in Morocco. And please show more because <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. So this is my brush was a little too dry there, so it left a line. But you can just wet it. Don't worry about it. Just wet it, and then 
it'll come in and I'm just going to kind of blend it in with this color. So I've got a little bit of the pink showing. I could add a little bit of the yellow, I suppose, down in here, which is very little. The Jewish community who received it really well. Now, I'm not going to do that pointed kind of light looking down the center because I don't have the sun showing. This is the end of the sunset. So, that's all I'm doing. And I'm just going to let it work its way. I've just cleaned my brush and I'm just kind of working this around a little bit so it fades out. And then that is pretty much it. Now for me, when I'm doing a card, I don't like to write on the front because if the receiver wants to keep your work as a framed painting, oh shoot, look what happened there. I'm going to have to uh, do that. If they want to keep it as a framed painting, I, I'm sorry, that made no sense, uh, then there, you, you don't want to put writing on the front of your work, unless that's your intention. But for me, I don't like to do that. So I had bleed through on this. Now, there's a couple ways you can fix that. You can frame your card or cut out your card and then put it on another card with a frame over it. Uh, or you can mat it. Now that's what I think I'm going to do, is mat this. Now, I have bought these online through Amazon. I got a box of 50. I can't remember how much they were. I got them a couple years ago. And I will use this sometimes when I'm sending somebody a card. What I do is I do a little five by seven painting or four by six, the whole is four by six. So uh, then I put this board, this cover board on the back, leaving the whitest side out. And then I make that my card and it, I write on the back of it my sentiment and then I just leave this like this so what I would do is cut this in half and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to keep folding this to soften it then I'm going to wet the edge and tear it and just take my brush wet this edge I'm going to get it nice and wet so it softens the paper and I'm going to fold it back and forth and then I'm just going to tear the paper that's all I'm going to do. There. And now I've got another piece of paper that I can make another card. And then I will go ahead, wipe that water off of there, and hopefully I've got enough edge here that I can frame this without it showing. Yes, I just barely have enough. And I can go ahead and tape that down. And then I will have my card framed. So let me go ahead and show you how I do that. I take artist tape because it's archival. I line up my photo or my, my uh, painting on the front and get it exactly where I want it. I want my water to show or my sand to show. So I'm moving my sky up a little bit. I've lost some of my sky here, see? Uh, so what I'm going to do is kind of try to keep it in between. Actually, there's more action down here, though. So I'm thinking I'll just get rid of the blue in the sky, most of it, and keep this down here. Because it's a little bit bigger than my mat is. So now on the back, it's going to look a little uneven. That's okay. I've got it set where I want it. I'm just going to take a few pieces of tape small pieces and I'm going to tape down these corners just to see where I'm at and then I'm going to go back on the front and check it real quick and make sure it's lined up the way I want it and it is not my water is going uphill so I've got to fix it you want to watch those things because that would look a little funny on the front of your painting. So I'm going to go ahead, and it looks like my water bled up there, which is kind of a bummer, but this is just for my husband, so <laughs> he'll be fine with it. He probably won't even notice it. I could try and fix it by bringing all of the water up. I might just have to do that. 
Yeah, that's a big wave. That's what that is. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip this again. Now I've got it all the way up to this top edge, so that's going to be very hard to tape down. But I'm going to try it. I'm going to have to tape this like this. There, I'll do it that way. And then I'll tape this down the side like this. There we go, that'll work. And then take this and I just put it on the back like that. And then it's all set to go in a frame. Oh shoot, I'm off again. See how I'm off here on this edge? Sometimes it takes a couple tries if your painting is not... I, I wasn't prepared to frame it, or I would have measured it that way. I like to eliminate my white framing when I'm going to mat a painting because then I don't have to worry about the edges showing like this. So I'm just going to pull this in. i got to pull it a little bit to the left. Let me just untape this. Put it a little bit further over. Make sure I've got it all in where I want it, on all sides. Going to bring this edge down a little to make my water look like it's level, a little more level. There, I guess that's as good as it's going to get. There. There we go. And then I've got a little bit of paper on the edge at the top I'll have to trim off. But there is my painting then. And I'm going to go ahead and secure this, put it in my little plastic bags that I have for these. But I'm going to write my sentiment on the back to my husband. I think I have this upside down. No, I don't. This is the softest side. Then I'm going to write my birthday greeting on the back here and put the year on. You want to sign your work. Always sign your work, you guys. I'm just going to use a pen today. Normally I don't do that, but I'm just going to sign right here. Really small. There. And there's your birthday card. Oops. Ah, did you hear that? My easy button fell. Okay. It was easy, wasn't it? There. Put that back. So in the meantime, everybody, remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care.